It's all yours. Testing uno, dos, tres. Okay, cool. Michael, you can have a seat right here, right there, behind Bryant. You'll be able to see. <laughs> You'll be able. I know you will. <laughs> Uh, let me uh, thank everybody for being here. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It's beautiful to see all these young puppies over here that used to play for us. Two of them. <laughs> but, uh, uh, thank you for being here. Um, got a great announcement today, and uh, it's no secret. I, I First and foremost, I want to thank uh, uh, Jake and, and our current players for a uh, job well done, uh, taking on uh, an unbelievable task uh, in the face of adversity. Uh, it's an unbelievable lesson. So I want to thank Jake. I want to thank the support staff, thank the players for uh, taking that on. I think I see Zed over there with his hat on the appropriate way. Look at him. He don't even know I'm talking about him. But uh, uh, they just did a marvelous job. So proud of them. Uh, secondly, I, want, I do want to thank the former players. Um, you know, Ross is going to talk about that a little bit, but having them engaged uh, along the way has, has been phenomenal. I want to thank the, the foundation uh, for their great support uh, in the NIL space. Uh, they've just been phenomenal. So thank you, Brian and, and Ron and all the others for your great support. Um, I, you know, I have the opportunity to introduce Ross, who you all know and, and have met, but I want to compliment him on a job well done. This was a thorough search, um, done exceptionally well, a uh, lot of due diligence and a lot of conversations. Um, just really proud of, of how he took his time and allowed the process to work. Uh, a lot of noise around searches, uh, these type of searches, and there was a lot of, a lot of noise, uh, but a lot of experts, a lot of sources. Uh, that were uh, out there, uh, but the only source was him. And so he, he kept it to the vest and he just did a marvelous job in, in finding Jake uh, coming home. So our, our athletic director, let me pause for a moment, say that the right way. Our athletic director, Ross Bork. <laughs> Gene, can we Gene, can we hire you part time as the MC in retirement? We'll have to convince him to come back. I think, especially Sheila. I think Sheila's ready to to uh, to hit the desert here pretty soon. So greetings. I guess I'm supposed to say O H. All right, we got that down. So I'm I'm learning. I've been on the ground uh, 16 days. So uh, I'm I'm learning. I'm going to thank Gene here in a second. But I just want to thank everyone for being here today from the band to our athletes to our staff and everyone is here this is a great day to be a buckeye as we celebrate the naming of our new head coach and ohio native jake diebler so nothing like uh, hitting the ground running as the incoming athletic director gene didn't afford me a luxury of having kind of a honeymoon phase so i had no shot at that now that this search is uh, was underway so i was on my sabbatical sabbatical back in Texas, kind of just hanging out, kind of resting, relaxing. And uh, Gene calls me about mid-February and says, okay, big boy, you're doing a search. So created the bunker uh, back in my house in Texas and started watching a lot of college basketball and making sure that uh, I was prepared. So it, it, it's all good. It's part of uh, being, a, being in leadership. I think we have uh, not quite hundreds of uh, Diebler family members, but several. So we're glad that you are here. Jordan, this is real. This is happening. She was a little skeptical, even about an hour into the conversation on Saturday. She wasn't quite sure. And, and the girls were representing Jake as his agent as well. They wanted to look at the papers uh, that were in, in front of him. So I, I really want to pause here and give special thanks to, to Gene. And, and really just for his support and advice during this search. So I, I'm the new guy around here. I don't know how procedures work. I don't know how you engage with HR and legal counsel and all of those kind of things. So he was really great in navigating all the things that have to happen from a procedural standpoint, but also to make sure 
that we were aligning with the culture and with the values of the university. So really his legacy experience just helped me uh, be a guide through this uh, process. So I want to thank Gene. Let's give Gene another round of applause. So I, I, I've learned so much over the last couple of weeks. Like I said, I've been on the ground 16 days and you know, connecting with uh, Ohio roots that we have in our family. In fact, I ran into a gentleman over here who went to high school with my uncle at uh, Hardin Northern, uh, Dick over there. So uh, thank you for, for being here. And so the most important people are the players. So I know we have some players here and I wanna commend them for their toughness and, and really their th uh, togetherness through the last uh, month or so. I know Zed's over here, maybe some other guys are here, but, but really wanna commend them because we're only here because of our athletes, period. We have jobs because of student athletes. So I really wanna commend them through an uncertain time over the last uh, five weeks or so. We have a lot of staff, we have a lot of coaches. If our staff, our athletic staff and our coaches could just kind of wave and be acknowledged and especially those who help set this up because we have a busy week in here. We have a game tomorrow night at seven. We've got the NCAA tournament on the women's side. It's a busy week in the shot. So I, I wanna thank the staff who really made uh, today and the rest of this week uh, possible. Former players. It looks like, uh, Michael, I didn't have a big enough Rolodex when I was starting to call former players, but thank you guys for being here today. That means a lot and really signifies, again, what it means to be a Buckeye. I wanna thank President Ted Carter, who due to a previous uh, scheduled uh, travel could not be here today, but he's fired up. He sees the wherewithal that Jake has. He's watched him uh, up close and personal. He knows the importance of athletics. He knows the importance of getting this higher right. And so we want, we want to thank him uh, from afar today, but he shares in the excitement about the future under Coach Diebler's leadership. Our trustees, our board of trustees, who have to approve everything, right, through the process, we want to thank them for their leadership. We, we had a very thorough and comprehensive search. Where's, uh, where's Dan Cloran? Dan, stand up. So Dan serves as our executive athletic, associate athletic director and sport administrator for men's basketball. I've known Dan for over 20 years. He and I formed a great team in this process. He was great, he was thorough, he understands what it means to be a Buckeye. So I wanna commend Dan for your leadership. But Dan, now we have to get back to raising money. So let's get back after it. We also use the services of uh, Collegiate Sports Associates. Todd Turner, the founder, Craig Littlepage, former athletic director and basketball coach, and then Drew Turner is the president and CEO of Collegiate Sports Associates. We use their expertise to make sure that we were doing our due diligence, to make sure that we were contacting the right candidates, to make sure that our intelligence was aligning with the right decision. We laid out a very specific profile about what we envisioned for Ohio State basketball. Passion, energy, create a program identity, a track record of player development, a recruiting machine, especially here in the Midwest, in the state of Ohio, strong leadership skills that can galvanize Buckeye Nation, someone who understands and also can capitalize in modern day college athletics. Born to coach, Jake Diebler fits each one of these characteristics and then some. But as the new person here in Columbus, I was doing this from afar. And so I needed to make sure that I could believe characteristics, I could believe profile, but I had to cross check that and make sure that those who built the program, blood, sweat, and tears, also I was able to talk to. So that goes to the tradition. So I talked to at least 15 former players and that was really a neat part of this aspect. And maybe, maybe as a new person, maybe I wouldn't have done that otherwise right? Because there was a lot of other things to accomplish and maybe I wouldn't have connected as much as I did with the former players that I spoke to. But, but I asked them questions. What does success look like? What does it mean to be the Ohio State coach? What do you expect in the program? And the feedback was consistent. They wanted leadership. They wanted a fit for Ohio State and they wanted relatability among a lot of other things. But it was great to hear that they expect excellence. So thank you to those I talked to in the audience. It sounds like, again, I need to expand that Rolodex as well, but it really validated that Jake is the right guy for this job. So in closing, it may be easy to say that 
We just walked right down the hallway. It's an easy pick. He's down the hallway. We could just name him our head coach. But we, we press Jake on what it takes to build championships, what it takes to, to make changes as the leader in the program. We ask him about modern day athletics. And we have a program, what's really neat about this is we have a program that's ready to excel. We have a program that's ready to take flight. And with the right kind of adjustments, we know that we can cut down nets and, uh, and raise those ladders that we all expect. So every time we checked the profile the values of Ohio State, the beacon was Jake. It just kept pointing to that he's the right guy. And so this was really cool. When Dan and I went to the Diebler house on Saturday night, I'll try not to get emotional about this, to make the official offer, I asked Jordan and Jake, are you ready to be the first family of Ohio State basketball? Of course, they said yes. But this was what was really neat, the, the passion the spiritual faith, the family, the vision, the energy, all of that was present in that moment on Saturday night. And so that's what it's really all about. This is a family, and that's what it means to be a Buckeye. And so in that moment, it really struck me that this is a calling for Jake Diebler, Ohio native, son of a coach. We might have to hire you as a consultant, or you can volunteer, right? <laughs> He had to work for everything that he's achieved. Hard work defines Jake Diebler. He played the game at a high level. His brother played here. So really, Saturday night in the, in the living room there in the kitchen, it just made all of this feel right. And I'm so confident in the future of Buckeye basketball. So it's time to bring out those ladders. It's time to bring out those scissors. And so please welcome your new head coach of Ohio State basketball, Jake Diebler. up a little later than probably had probably should have got started an hour earlier but um wow it's uh growing up you have dreams and you never fully get to predict if or when those dreams will come true and so I just want to praise God for being able to live out a dream of mine. This is a dream. And it wouldn't be possible without my wife, Jordan, my beautiful babies, James, Jessa, and Jackson. It wouldn't be possible without my family, my mom and dad, my brothers, um, best friends, cousins, right? like my wife's family. We have such family so important to us. It's been ingrained in me from the time that I could start walking when I was interrupting my dad's practices. And that family has expanded beyond just our family. It's, it's the basketball family that we've been a part of, guys that my dad coached before I was even born guys that I played with, whether it was in middle school or high school or college. My best friend and college teammate is here. So you're going to hear me talk about over and over again family. And part of our family is Ross Bjork. Thank you. Thank you. Part of our family is President Carter. Thank you, President Carter. And thank you, Gene Smith, for choosing me to fill in and empowering me to, to be myself and the mentor that you've been to me. Thank you. And thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Dan Cloran, for the mentor that you've been. This is all part of our family. Thank you, Team 125. Thank you to our guys for how they believed and they stayed connected, how they led through the adversity that we went through. 
Thank you to our staff of Team 125, our managers, the people of the, around the shot who we come in contact with every single day. There's so many thank yous, and I know I'm missing people, but I just, I know I wouldn't be here if, as Ross said, I wasn't called to be here, and if it weren't for out, if it, if it were not for those people. So I owe so many thank yous. And now I want to turn my attention to this group right here. I'm humbled to be in this position. I take so seriously the foundation that you guys have laid for this program, that which we stand upon, and hopefully we will honor in the greatest way to help get this thing to the heights that it belongs. So if we can, can we please give the former players that are here a round of applause. If you guys will stand up, please stand up. Thank you. This program has a rich tradition, and it's because of these guys and the, and the guys before them. And when we talk about family in this program, it expands beyond the current roster, the current staff. It, it expands beyond guys who maybe played recently. It, it, it's, it's all the way back to the beginning. And the amount of support that we got the last month from our former players, guys stopping into practice, spending time with our guys, speaking about what it means to wear an Ohio State jersey. I will forever be grateful for those moments. Thank you for the support. This is just the beginning of us building and growing that relationship because this is your program. We are stewards of this. We want to serve this program. My family and I, our staff, will serve this program with everything we have. And you guys are a real source of motivation for that, so, so thank you. It became clear from the very beginning when Ross talked about his expectations for this program that we were in alignment. We have great expectations for this. Uh, we, are gonna, we are gonna commit and make decisions through the lens of what helps Ohio State basketball win a championship and cut down those nets that he talked about. We are going to serve our roster, our players, our staff, this program with all the energy and passion that we could possibly do it. Family is a multi-dimensional thing. What each member does affects the other. We've talked about how big that family is. We are all gonna be committed. We're gonna surround ourselves with people who are committed to, to moving in the same direction and caring and loving on everybody who is a part of that. Ohio State is a special place. It's talked about how that is my dream job, but it, it's so special. This university, I've seen firsthand what it can do for those who are connected to it. I wasn't good enough to play here, but I got to see the impact it had on my brother and my family, him being here, how Buckeye Nation has supported him, the care, the love. It's something I've always appreciated and valued. There's also one of the best things about Ohio State is the elite level people in this department, across this campus. Ohio State is the best of the best. And we are gonna do everything we can to push this basketball program to align with that. With that being said, thank you again. You're the best. Wouldn't be here, whoops. Wouldn't be here without you. And this may be the first time I'm actually in the same place as Brutus, where my kids may put me number one over him. So thank you guys. I love you. It's an honor to serve you in this role. I'm so excited about the future. Thank you for everyone being here. Thank you for the support. Thank you, Jake. And okay, if tech support, if we could turn on our wireless mics. And we're going to open up the Q&A session. Uh, Jake, if you don't mind just taking a seat, we're going to start with uh, Ross for a handful or two of questions, and then we'll, uh, then we'll turn back to Jake. So we'll open up questioning today with Adam Jardy from the Columbus Dispatch. 
Oh, Ross, congratulations on your first Thank hire you. here. Um, Thank you. you. You've talked throughout this process about head coaching experience being important, and then you talked about all the things that, that Jake met as you went through this process. Can you elaborate on all the other things that you think make up for the one thing that might be missing, which is lack of head coaching experience? Yeah. Look, I, I think what we saw the last eight games, has it been eight games? And there's another game where he subbed in, I think, when, uh, when Coach was sick. And so, look, either you have the wherewithal or you don't. Are we good? Yeah. We good? That was not me screaming, by, by the way. So, to me, you, you have the wherewithal or you don't. And, and actually, if you break down the moves that were made during games, he outcoached coaches that have been doing this a long time strategy, substitutions, timeouts. So as you observe that, you say, okay, do you have that wherewithal? Clearly he has a whisperer, has his dad in his ear and sort of that born to coach mentality. So as we looked at all the characteristics, as we looked at where's this program at now, what's, what's coming down the pathway in terms of the next couple classes here in the state of Ohio, which are really deep in recruiting, I sat down with uh, folks that know recruiting in this landscape and to connect all the dots that he has, there's value in that. There's value in that in terms of other people that would have to come in and learn that perhaps. So we just thought, look, if we know where we're going, let's pull the trigger. He's the real deal. He knows how to live at the highest level of college basketball. He's seen it in action. So to me, that made up for the lack of long-term head coaching experience because he just fits with where we are in this program right now. Andy Anders, 11 Warriors. Uh, yeah, uh, what, what else about his broader vision? You talked about the on-court side of it. You talked about the recruiting, but obviously there's a lot that goes into this in terms of transfer portal, NIL, staff construction. What about those things in terms of his long-term vision for the program stood out to you? To me, that's where, as an assistant coach in this modern era, you know, I think you actually take his age as an advantage, the, the relatability piece. He recruited most of the guys, or was the lead recruiter on most of the guys on the roster. He's recruiting that next generation of guys that are, you know, considering Ohio State. So, to me, you take all that whole package that he offers. Yeah, he may be a certain age. But either the wherewithal is there and the DNA is there. And, and what I think about Jake, as I was going through my process to become an AD, he actually reminds me a lot of myself because he's overprepared because he's been dreaming about this for a long, long time. And I think I was 37 when I became an AD. Jake, how old are you? 37. 37. So very similar in terms of the preparation, just because you're not – the head coach and title doesn't mean you don't have an organized plan, doesn't mean you don't have a vision, doesn't mean you're not establishing core values for when you might take over a job. So he was equipped, I think, a little bit beyond maybe what you see on a resume. Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Ross, you talked about the standard here needs to go up. In your mind, what is the standard for Ohio State basketball? I think we should be consistently in the conversation for Big Ten championships. And if you're doing that, then you're going to be in a postseason run where you have the wherewithal to go to the Final Four and cut down those nets. We, we've been to Final Fours in recent history, right? And so we, we have that in our DNA. The way I described it to Adam when I talked to him last month was we have a blue blood type program, right? Now we need to be consistent in maximizing those ingredients. So to me, those are the things that he can activate. So whether it's the recruiting piece, whether it's the resources, whether it's working with the foundation and the 1870 society on NIL, we have to maximize all those resources. We need to sell more season tickets, right? We lowered ticket prices. We're getting ready to, to launch all the season ticket renewals. Those things all have to be turned on. And, and this man right here has the leadership ability to activate all of those things so those are the ingredients that we have now we have to turn it on and so that'll be the work that we have to do all of us in this department have to think of basketball at a higher level to achieve what we want in terms of reaching that standard of uh, cutting down nets andy backstrom letterman row 
Ross, you said that you started this process in Texas when you were still on sabbatical. Then you got here in Columbus. What was what most impressed you, I guess, about Jake as a leader once you got here and you got to see it in action? I saw it. I saw it in that Purdue game, and I thought he was actually going to play. I think he was on the court a, a couple times. I think they told him to back off. To me, you just you saw the energy, you saw the connectivity, you saw that. He was maybe going to open up the style of play a little bit more. Maybe there's a little more freedom of, of playability, if you will. That's what players want to play in. They want to play in a in a structured but yet open style to maximize their talent. So you, you saw all of those things. And then when I came to the game on, uh, on March the 3rd, I saw the environment and what it's capable of. I saw the way we played. I mean, we... We hammered him in the second half. I mean, that was awesome to see, right? And so all of those elements just came together. And then you have to sit down and talk. So we met with Jake, I don't know, two or three weeks ago uh, when I got here. We met in person and then through conversations, solidifying what that plan could be, what he brings to the table, what his blueprint could be for this program in terms of the program identity. Again, it was it was the right decision for all of those reasons. Pat Murphy, 24-7 Sports. <clears throat> Ross, similar to, to kind of what you were just saying, but when you have an interim coach, you often see a bump. How do you distinguish between the pressures off, guys are playing free under a different guy, versus sort of what you were just talking about with Jake as the coach, knowing that this will be a different situation come November next year? Well, I think that's what you have to test them on. And that's what the conversations were about, right? This isn't just five weeks, right? This is okay. This is a long term vision. And do you have the plan? Are you prepared to make the right kind of adjustments that we need to make, knowing that we have a, a really good foundation? But are you prepared to make those? And that's through conversation. You, you test that willpower that he has. And again, People are born to do this, and there's leadership. There's innate leadership abilities that you that you see manifest in conversations, in interactions. The way he carried himself in in the media, he never he never made it about self preservation. That he's doing everything to manipulate it to get the job. He was doing everything what's best for the program in this time. So all of that comes with a maturity level where you know that this is sustainable, and that that came through in the process. Tim May, the Tim May Show and Letterman Row. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, Ross, did it hit you in Minneapolis? When did it hit you that this was the mo I mean, this was the right call? This was your decision? Honestly, and what uh, yeah, Dan and I, I don't know the exact date. I guess I got here on March 2nd. I'm trying to think what date we first uh, sat down and met with Jake. Honestly, I, I walked out of the room and I said, this guy could do the job. There is no question that he could do the job. He's got the ability. He's got the leadership skills. He's got the connectivity. And then as I really researched more the recruiting pieces of it, the leadership pieces of it, spending more time with him, I'm watching him in person. I went to a practice last week. You see how that's organized. You see that energy. Again, you kind of know it when you see it. And so that piece of it, really came together over the last couple of weeks. And then I told everybody that I talked to about this, that this is a key weekend. Selection Sunday, transfer portal, even though it's been open here on our campus for, for a while, the transfer portal starts today. We wanted to make a postseason run, run, but I knew that you had to have some kind of clarity going into this weekend and going into this week. There's a lot of jobs open, right? And so if we honed in on the right person, Let's just pull the trigger and let's make it happen and let's provide the clarity for our roster. Let's provide clarity in recruiting. Let's provide clarity in the transfer world that this is our guy and let's go. And tomorrow night we tip off at 7 o'clock under his leadership permanently. Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. He said uh, he kind of has a lot of intangibles and players have said he's got the it factor. Mm -hmm. Maybe you already spoke to this, but what do you what do you see as an it factor in him? Honestly, it, it's really the moment that we had like in the kitchen living room at the Diebler house. Like it is about family values. It is about faith. It is about togetherness. If you have those characteristics in your home life, 
that's going to carry over to your professional life. And then you see the way he connects with our current players, with our former players, the way he connects with our donors. All of those things just stand out in a meaningful way that it's not it's not fake. One of the one of the things I've learned in the last couple of weeks is there's not pretense here at Ohio State. And if anybody signifies that, it's Jake Diebler. So that's just real and genuine. And, and to me, that carries over to whatever realm we're going to be in, whether it's recruiting, whether it's interacting with the public, whether it's out campaigning for season tickets or donations. It's the personality that matters and, and leadership ability is leadership ability. Really, I, I, look, he's done it for the eight games, eight or nine games as the head coach, but now you're moving over, people talk about ambassador, you're, you're moving over the 18 inches and it's such a big difference. So what our job to be, will be is to help him, help him understand the magnitude of that. This is a big place, it's a massive place. I called it a public trust when I got introduced, right? So that, that's a big deal that comes with the stature of that. And so having the ability to handle that until you're in it, but again, he's going to go back to his faith. He's going to go back to support that he has from his family. We're going to have to help him through that. So that's really the growth that all of us go through as leaders. Until you're in it, it's hard to really know what it looks like. And that's where uh, all the support will, uh, will come into play. Got two more questions for Ross. Uh, first, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Ross, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but your, your hiring track record doesn't truly suggest like hiring from within. Does it make it a little easier to hire with, from within when you can put NIL backing and other resources that maybe weren't available in college athletics four or five years ago? Now you can put those behind a guy and, and help him as he learns how to be a head coach for the first time? You, you always do what's best for the institution. And so you go on information that you have. So whatever, whatever you're alluding to, I'm not quite sure. But you go with the best information at the time you have it. Jake Diebler's the right guy, no matter if he's promoted within, down the hallway, or we hired him from another program. Support matters in modern day college athletics. So what we've said here is that we embrace all of it, from buying a t-shirt, to raising dollars for capital projects, to NIL, to the working with the foundation, all of that matters. So embracing that, he's already been doing that since he's been back here. And so to me, that's a piece of the puzzle. But it comes down to leadership, and that's what Jake possesses. And final question for Ross, uh, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. You kind of mentioned it already, the recruiting aspect, that he's recruited most of the guys on his roster. He's from here. He's got a brother who's played. It seemed like some of the other options reportedly were outside hires, but maybe with outside hires, you're maybe starting from scratch, especially in this world. How much did that matter when you decide to go with Jake in a situation where it doesn't seem like, because of all those other elements, he's not necessarily starting from scratch, even if he's a yeah. He, he, Again, the profile, the characteristics, was, was he matching all of those? The answer was yes. The added bonus of this is the timing. He's already been hitting the ground running from a recruiting standpoint. He's already got those built-in relationships. So the added bonus where he has a head start, that was an attractive piece of it, but he had to fit the other things first. If he didn't match the other characteristics and you only went with that, was that sustainable? The leadership and the wherewithal has to be sustainable. And so that was the first thing. This piece right here, that's where you can really flip it quickly. And that's where you can get back to the standard that we expect. And so that, that's the added bonus of having those ties to the state of Ohio and his legacy here in this state. Ross, thank you very Great. much. Thank you. Jake, we'll open up. Uh, is that Tim May? The, or who's got it? Uh, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. <laughs> Jake, how do you build on eight games of success, but now being in the lead role and, and having to do things as, as the permanent head coach? How do you build on that and build on the continuity that you've now started while also understanding that you're a new head coach for a reason, that um, you know the previous head coach isn't here anymore, and so you have to kind of make this into your own? How do you balance those two things as you start this new journey? Timing's going to be important. It's still about serving our players as best as I possibly can and serving this program as best as I possibly can. That's what it was about when Gene and I met, and that's what it's going to be about moving forward. The timing of 
making more changes and more adjustments and that will that will come that will be here you know really right around the corner but we need to finish this season well first the focus is serving these guys all the way through and then we'll we'll turn to being able to make some of those more significant changes that we we it didn't make sense to do and give us the best chance was best for our guys when uh, when the change happened. Joe Nugent, WCMH. Congrats, Jake. What uh, what do you think the challenges will be like leading the team year after year after year versus doing it for eight games in an interim role? Well, thank you. Yeah, first off, I, I, it's hard to speak on something that I haven't experienced yet. But I will say this: what what drives me is to serve this program and, and as best as I possibly can. That's not going to change. It's not going to change once we are able to win a championship. It's not going to change when we go through adversity. It's not going to be different you know, five years from now or however much longer I'm able to serve. So why I do it, what motivates me, my foundation is set. That's my faith and my family. But why I do it, like, our former players are always going to be here. That's motivation for me. So time will change things, certainly. But the motivation behind how we're going to take this program to where it belongs will not. Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. You've not been shy about talking about your faith through all this, um, through a lot of uncertainty for you and your family. What has that faith meant to you through all this, leading you to this point now? Everything. It means everything. I was asked during this process, how will you handle everything that goes with, you know, being the head coach at Ohio State? And my foundation is my faith. That's what I will, I will always go back to. That's what will always keep me steady. That's, and I got into coaching because the most influential people in my life were coaches. They helped me grow spiritually. They helped me grow as a man, as a future husband and father. So why I got into coaching was to have that same impact on guys. I didn't go to college to be a coach. I saw my dad do it. He was unbelievable at it. I had these grand visions of owning my own business and things like that. But coaches are the ones that changed my life. I still believe in the influence that coaches can have on, on young men, and particularly this age, because that's when my life was changed. That's when my faith journey started. So that's how important it is to me. It's why I do what I do. And it's, make no mistake, I believe I'm here today because this is where God wants me to be. So I will continue to be open about what, you know, how important that is to me. Thank you for your question though. David Briggs, Toledo Blade. Jed, going back to the influences on your life, your dad, of course, is a successful longtime high school coach. What did, what did your dad mean in this journey? And, and what does it also mean to represent Northwest Ohio on this stage? I very much appreciate that question. I take a great deal of pride in being from Northwest Ohio. And if you know our family background, we moved around a little bit. So when people ask me where I'm from, I tell them I'm from the 419. I take a great, yes, I take a great deal of pride in that. And if you look at, that's no offense to some former players who aren't from there, but if you look at the history of this program, there are some, un, like the, the record books are filled with people from that area. So, probably should move on because I could go all day about that. But my dad's been, been so influential in my life. I. Those of you who've seen him coach can probably see that how I coach is a reflection of how he coached. And he taught me at a very early age how, you know, how important passion was, both when you're correcting, but, but in an encouraging way too, and celebrating good things that happened. And his influence on me was, is, it's, it's huge. Him being around these, this last month has been, has been critical for me in, in, in the way he supported me. So I can't look at you or I'm going to get emotional. Um, it just, it, this means everything for our family to be able to be here and him, him be here today. Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. And Rob, when you're done, can you put it over your left shoulder for Katie? Thank you. Rob Aller.
your life could have taken a lot of different paths. You said maybe you were going to start your own business. Do you remember the moment you flipped the switch and what prompted that to go into coaching? Was there a moment or was it a gradual thing? It was a more gradual thing. My freshman season didn't go the way that I envisioned it was going to go, which a lot of guys deal with that, right? And I vividly remember picking up the phone and calling my dad and saying, Dad, I got to transfer. Homer Drew doesn't like me. And if you know Homer Drew, he's like the nicest human on the planet. And my dad in less words said, don't ever call me again. You gave him your word, like treat practice like your game. And in that moment, I changed my mentality in college. And I went from not playing really at all to being voted by, the, by our team as a captain my sophomore year. And that sparked a leadership quality that I, I think I really embraced and I enjoyed and I, I valued. And again, that influence of the Drew family and the staff at Valpo and how I saw my dad's ability to impact people. I wanted to impact people in a positive way. Coaching seemed like just a great vessel for that. So over that period of time in college was when I realized that this is what I'm called to do. Katie Capusta, Spectrum One. Hey, Jake, congratulations again. You. you talked about being from Northwest Ohio. You had quite a prolific high school career as well and some memories here in this building. A little bit about how that success has led you here today. Yeah, to this day, and we're gonna have to, we gotta build this to where we can, we can surpass this. But the, my greatest memory in basketball is being on this court, winning a state championship with my dad coaching and my brother on the team. I've yet to be able to a, a accomplish or achieve anything that has surpassed that. Perhaps we can do that here, but um, this arena has meant a lot to me. I met my wife here. We got engaged here. We, uh, you know, it, this. There's been so many moments on this court and it's just part of the, the the list of things of why we care so much about this program but yeah that 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 moment i i hope every kid i wish every kid could experience that every high school kid i, I love the state tournament it's the absolute best ohio high school basketball is special there's great coaches in this state it's critical the relationship between our program and the state is is really important we have to continue to raise that because we want we want guys from this state to be a part of our program it doesn't have to exclusively be there's been a lot of great players go through here who aren't from ohio but we could spend all day talking about the list of guys and some of them are here who are from this state and i just believe when you put on an ohio state jersey and you are from the state of ohio it's almost like getting a, just an extra two, three percent. Guys in this program, they've always given everything they have. But when you're from this state and you put that jersey on, you get an extra couple percent, like unlocks maybe a little bit extra ability. So, um, yeah, I, that was my best memory. I'll forever cherish that. But this court, this court and this building have meant a lot to us. A couple more questions, folks. Adam Jardy, Columbus Dispatch. Thank you. So you after the game on Friday night you said you hope to come home get a little bit of rest and kind of figure out what was going to what were those next 24 hours like for you how did Saturday unfold and, and when did you realize that this was all real yeah thanks to Ross I didn't get any more rest in fact it went the other way um, you know we didn't know our postseason right what, what that was going to look like so I my mind was kind of still wrapped around that a lot and wrapped around just how we could we could serve our players when I got a chance to meet with Ross and just how that, you know, kind of unfolded. Um, yeah, I was, I was a little anxious. I was a little, uh, there were just a lot of different emotions going on. And when this, when he came over to our house and this really became real, that was almost exhausting in itself because it just, there was just an abundance of just joy and, and happiness and we're calling our, our parents and it was it was it was special but no it, it's it was a wild uh emotionally a wild you know, wild day and we'll wrap things up with tony gerbin buckeye huddle jake in ohio um what is your philosophy on building the roster via school recruiting versus the portal i think balance is important i think balance is important at ohio state like we're able to recruit 
talented high school players, and we need to continue to do that. But we also need to utilize kind of all the resources available to build the best roster possible. So that that balance will be important. That'll that'll change to some degree year to year. But we're going to continue to view through the lens of what best sets us up to achieve our, our goals. And high school recruiting is really, really important in that. So is transfer uh, portal is important in that. And then roster retention is probably the great of greatest importance. Right now. Yeah, listen, our focus still, we still got something to play for. So our focus as a, as a program has been on that. But conversations have been started. We got to serve these guys well and see this season through. But as you guys have seen, there's some great there. There are great players in this program right now. And there are great players in this program who care a lot about Ohio State. They showed that that was revealed by the way they played and finished the season. So we'll, we'll certainly lean into that, embrace that. And those conversations will, will happen as soon as the season's over. Great, gentlemen. Thank you very much, media. We'll try to do a couple uh, group huddles uh, just behind us here, get you guys a few more questions. And everyone else, thank you so much for coming. Gentlemen, congratulations. Thank you for being here.